I'm gonna shake everything first. Bear with me. The pop one? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I haven't popped up on mine yet. Oh, I just yeah. got it. Yeah. Yeah, it just popped up. Mm -hmm. I'm going to read this for you right quick, bro. Okay. Jeremiah chapter 28, verse 8, and it reads, The prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesied both against many countries and against great kingdoms of war and of evil and of pestilence all right shalom shalom you know it's the brothers from the gms raleigh gms from calling came back from the lord's moment of the fine lesson uh, before we go any further of all praise honor and glory to the heavenly father and his only begotten son the Lord the apostles and elders of the great millstone are teaching us the Lord is saying truth according to the Bible well and peace and blessings so flood to the nation of Israel. I'm the brother Isaiah and I got the brother uh, Hawad with me. You know, uh, Lord's willing, you know, we're going to come back. You know, we just got, you know, open form, you know, just uh, back to the basics, you know, of, uh, you know, what our duty is mm -hmm. as the prophets of Yahweh, Shema Shai, which is to warn, to edify, and to exhort our people. You know, to uh, to endure sound doctrine, to continue in the faith. You know, continue to believe in, you know, the words of Yahweh by Shema Mashai. You know, that's the most important thing. You know, uplifting the names of Yahweh by Shema Mashai and the one hundred percent truth that we've been given of uh, via the Holy Spirit in these last days. You know, mm -hmm. you got it, bro. You want to read that again? Yeah, I got a quick precept for you. Bring it out. What you just said. This is um First Corinthians chapter fourteen, verse three, and it reads. But he that prophesieth speaketh unto men to edification and exhortation and comfort. That's right. So he that prophesieth, right? He that says before, because that's the gospel, the good news. We're telling you of the good news to come before it happens. But yes, before it gets good, it has, it must, and, and it will get ugly. Mm -hmm. You know, but yet there's hope for those that uh, believe in the names of Yahweh by Shema Shai. You want to read it again? Um, it's a lot. Um, first Corinthians chapter 14, verse 3, and it reads, But he, he, bro, not she, but mm -hmm. he. So the men are supposed to be teaching, you know what I'm saying? The yeah, men bro. of Israel are supposed to be teaching, right? Negroes, mm -hmm. Latins, and Anarchy Indians, Israelite, um, it's been scattered throughout the four corners of the earth, the speckled birds, the men, right? First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 3, and it reads, But he that prophesieth speaketh unto men to edification. In exhortation, so like Can that word edify uh, means to build, right? So we're building you up for the great and terrible day of Yahweh by Shema Rashad. You know, we're building you up so you can uh, face those fiery trials that you're going through right now. You know, mm -hmm. these words of comfort. Scripture say, uh, comfort ye my people with these words. Yep. You know, uh, speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem that her warfare is accomplished. Mm -hmm. right, so we're coming to it. The time of our punishment to our the time the, our punishment is coming to an end. Yep. You know. So, before, like like we always say, war, evil, and the pestilence is going to come before it happens. But we're going to be uh, protected during those times of famine. We're going to be uh, taken care taken care of when there's upward of the people out here in the streets when they're anarchy, right? Because the name of the Lord is a strong power. The righteous run into it and are safe. You see? That's right. You got it, brother. And exhortation. Oh, what was that? Acts 14 and 22, exhorting the souls of the disciples, right? And, yep. you know, to continue in the faith and that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of the Most High. You know, things have gotten a lot uh, tougher since we've uh, come, you know, after that solar eclipse, you know, uh, April uh, 8th. You know, spirits have been uh, ramping up on people. You know, the, the spiritual battle has been getting harder. But 
that just pushes us to, to level up. Mm -hmm. you know, in the spirit that pushes us closer, you know, to Yahweh by Shema The scripture say, when well, now are changed to a lower state, the cleave on to him, depart now the way. That's right. You see, so we're here to exhort our people that, you know, change is going to come. Things are going to get better, you know, for the whole full elect of Yahweh by Shema In due season, the Lord says he's going to give every needful thing in due season. Mm-hmm. And comfort. And, and comfort, you know, we broke down the comfort, you know, the, the Lord said, I would not leave you uh, comfortless, you know, I, I, can I get that? Yep, yep. This is a uh, St. John uh, 14 and uh, 7 and 16, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Right? So this spirit of truth, you know, uh, it, it is one that the world cannot receive. The world of Israel that's lying in wickedness. That reject the ways of Yahweh by Shema mm -hmm. But all those that uh, receive the truth, you know, have received this comfort to understand what the will of the Lord is. What's coming for you know, the hopeful elect in these last days and why we uh, must uh, keep fighting, why we must keep uh, pushing forward uh, towards the goal of salvation. That's right. <clears throat> I'm going to go right back to Jeremiah and finish that off. Because even though all hell breaking loose, you know what I'm saying, we, we've been comforted with the comforter. You know what I'm saying, bro? Mm -hmm. and the things that are written the fourth time were written for our learning that we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. What gives us hope in the midst of destruction, in the midst of chaos, in the midst of war, in the midst of famine, in the midst of this devil coming in like a flood, in the midst of this man making it mandatory that we take an implantable device, what comforts us in these troubling times when, when bills are getting higher, rent is increasing, you see? Yeah. It's just getting outrageous. What's comforting us during these troubling times? This word, man. Going right back to Isaiah 33 and 6, you know? So while we're prophesying against this place, we're prophesying of war, we're prophesying of evil, we're being comforted at the same time, bro. You see? Mm-hmm. That's so right. We're going right back, Jeremiah 2 and 8, and 8. And then, and then one thing about it, bro, these other Israelite groups, you know what I'm saying, the majority of them, they're prophesying of peace, bro. Yeah. They're comforting our people with lies, bro. All hell break loose, but you're comforting our people with lies, telling them that everything's going to be all right. You know what I'm saying? This place is going to bounce back. But it ain't, man. This place ain't going to bounce back. And like and like like we was going into before we even started on the, uh, the stream, like slandering a person is gonna be a good look for you. Like lying on somebody is gonna be a good look for you. You see? Mm -hmm. Like no saying, like trying to destroy a man's um livelihood is gonna be a good look for you, man. You see? Yeah. It's not about how you look in the eyes of the people, because that's how that's where King Saul aired, right? He wanted to look good in the eyes of the people. It's about looking good in the eyes of Yahweh by Shema Right. You know. <clears throat> and then that Jeremiah on um, 15 and 3. No, we're well, not Jeremiah, Proverbs 15 and 3. And I'm gonna get that right quick, bro. Come on. I'm gonna make, yeah, I'm gonna make one point right quick. This uh Proverbs chapter 15, verse 3. And this is the open for me and the brother gonna be all over the place. And Lord willing, the hopeful elect of the nation of Israel is edified, right? Proverbs chapter 15, verse 3, and it reads, The eyes of the Lord power, which are the angels, the chariots. Are in every place beholding the evil and the good. So the Lord, the Lord got the angels seeing everything that everybody's doing. They're watching what we're doing throughout the day, every day, and they're watching what everybody else do. Ain't nobody getting away with nothing, man. That's why mm -hmm. hence repentance. That's why we teach repentance, starting off with the elder apostles, slash elder bishop, the great millstone, the men on down, the affiliates. We teach repentance, man. What who was you doing with your grace period? Because remember the time of Noah, everybody played around with their grace period. Noah was out there wanting for 120 years. 120 years of grace period, they played around with it. And what came? A flood. Mm -hmm. That's this um, 1968, 69, up until now, 2024, I call it 2024, Israelites been playing around with their grace period, man. You see? And now the grace yeah. period, all so it's time to pay up now. So going right back, you want to say something, bro? Yeah, that uh, spirit of procrastination is real heavy amongst our people. You know, and, you know, every day you get another opportunity to repent, you know, but every day is a day closer to where there isn't going to be any more opportunity of getting this word, you know, as it is so easy accessible now via the, uh, via the Internet. You see, so, you know, 
the eyes of the Lord be in every place, like the rose going into the angels, you know, beholding the evil and the good. You want, you know, when those angels bring back the report to the heavens, speak, you want the angels to speak about all the good that you're doing down here upon the earth while the rest of the world is doing evil. Mm -hmm. You know, scripture say that Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord, you know, he found mercy or favor, you know, via his spirit. You know, how he, he had a different spirit than everyone else, how he... You know, when he went through his calamities, his his misfortunes, right? He didn't uh, he didn't curse the Most High in his heart, right? Right? He continued on the path that Yahweh Shema Shai wants us as Israelite men and women to walk. You got it, brother. Y'all just add on what you what you just said. Beautiful point. See, the Lord ain't just only looking at the works that we do as far as in these videos. He's looking at our works toward the ministry too. How we treating brothers? You know what I'm saying? You see? How are we conducting ourselves throughout the days, man? The Lord's watching all that, man. We can't be hypocrites either, man. The Lord's watching everything. And I got a quick, quick precept, and then I'm going to go right back to Jeremiah, unless you got mm -hmm. something else after this. This is Romans chapter, 13, Romans chapter 13, verse 11, and it reads, And that, knowing the time, is like you said, we're one day closer. Yeah. We one day we we're really one day closer to the Lord coming, man. You see, we one day closer to martial law popping off. We one day closer to the hour of temptation. We one day closer to Jacob's trouble. You see, a famine, um, a fan of feminine bread and water and the famine of the word. We are one day closer to all that, but Jake playing around. Mm -hmm. but of course, no saying just flooding the internet with the truth, bro. No matter how much slander they doing, you need. No matter how much lying they doing on us, we just we on that path, bro. Just teach the truth. Just teach the truth. The Lord said, I'm going to reward every man according to his works, right? Ain't that what the scriptures say? Yeah, yeah. Every man going to be rewarded according to his works, man, whether they're good or bad, man. It says, in that, knowing the time, and the, the thing about it, Isaac, the majority of the Israelites really don't even know what time it is, period, bro. Mm -hmm, they don't really mm -hmm. know what they're involved in, bro. They don't really know that this thing is deadly serious, and then America, Babylon of Grace is going to be destroyed soon come, bro. They don't even, they don't, bro, they can't even perceive that the Lord got spirits created with Venice out there, man, taking people off the earth, bro. Yeah. And our next move could be our last. You got it, bro. Yeah, you got you got people, you know, family members who might have resentment for one another, and then, you know, they pass away, and then they have this guilt, you know, now I wish instead of, you know, being so resent, holding this resentment this whole time, you know, I spent more time with them, or I worked towards building better relationship and be better memories with them. Mm -hmm. Well, America is about to be that relative that pass away, and Yahweh Shema Shai, you know, is the one you really need to begin that relationship with better. Right. That that's who you need to be building a better relationship with because the opportunity, that bridge, you know, of you building that relationship is about to be burnt. You know, you you about to burn the bridges. You know, you 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 can hey. offend the Lord uh, one too many times to where you know scriptures say because thou didn't want to receive the knowledge of the Most High in your hearts. You know, He's gonna give you over to a reprobate mind to do those things that are not convenient. Mm. You know, and that's a lot of our people. You know, not to say the Lord can't have mercy upon them still. You know, because we were once in that uh, in the monks of darkness doing all types of, of manner of evil and wickedness. But once we heard the gospel, you know, the Lord allowed his uh, marvelous light to, to shine within us, you know, and that comfort that came inside of us. It's the, 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 the answer to all your problems is within, mm -hmm. you know, the Lord, you know, and that's, you know, and what's in, you know, comes out, you know, through the power of faith that we have in Yahweh Shema Shai working through us. That's right, bro. So going right back, Romans 13 and 11, the reason that knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep for salvation is nearer than when we believe. Mm -hmm. Salvation is nearer than when we believe. Salvation is really close. You know, like when you're looking at the atmosphere and, you know, the, the prophecy of, of Revelation 6 of, you know, the super hyperinflation come into effect and how the oil, how, how the truth, you know, isn't de devaluing, you know. This truth truly is not devaluing, you know, the brothers who have, you know, stick to the basics and understanding what, you know, your, uh, your gift is and, you know, bringing your offering, you know, to the, to the truth, you know, and continue to labor and, you know, like brother saying, not be a hypocrite. You, you see the value in that as the Lord always comes through. The Lord is mm -hmm. always, the Lord is getting you out of a situation, out of a situation, out of a situation that the situation you in now is no different. Right. You know, it's just another situation. 
and we got to keep the faith because when there ain't no food on the shelves and Jake is out here bugging out and all hell's breaking loose, that's just another situation that your faith is going to have to get you through. Mm-hmm. And just to add on what you were saying, look, the Lord said, I'm, I'm not the type of power that's going to forget your uh, works. I'm mm -hmm. not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love. You see? We, we 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 push forth the word of the Lord in sincerity and in truth. Not in, not not coming with no pride, no saying, and no not trying to uh, make a name for ourselves or any of that. We give all the glory to you. How through his only begotten Son, you how shy. We ain't trying to make a name for ourselves. We're just trying to do what the Lord put His Spirit on us to do, and that's just teach the truth according to the Bible, man. See if we're if we if you want to slander us and defame us, no saying for teaching the truth. Do what you gotta do, man. We can't stop what you do, no saying, just like you can't stop what we're doing. So do what you gotta do, man. We see how it works out for, for all of us. You see, at the end of the day, it says, um, the night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let That's us right. have to lock it. No, uh, uh the night is far spent, you know. Um I, I'm gonna look at that uh definition for uh far spent. Yeah, but you we understand the night uh, represents Esau Edom and his kingdom, right? Uh, used up or exhausted, uh, consumed. You know, right. so the the night, the time of the night having its reign upon the earth, it's is used up. It's used up all this time. The Lord said, "Bound this man cannot pass." Mm. You know, so the night is far spent. The day is at hand, right? The day represents, you know, uh, Yahweh Shai and the kingdom of heaven, you know, and you have to walk in light, you know, and and, and while it's still darkness, you know. That's right, bro. You have to, uh, you have to walk in the light while while the light is uh, here. Yahweh Shai said, uh, while I'm in the world, I am the light of the world, right? And while he is the light of the world, we must do the works of him that sent us, mm -hmm. you know, and, and uh, we must shine as those lights in the world, you know, that's. We can't we can't be walking in darkness. We cannot right. sleep as do others. It says it says, um, let your light so shine before men. That's right. So we can't so we can't hide this word, you see? We can't take months off, bro. You see? Mm -hmm. We can't take years off. We got the light, we gotta let the light shine in the midst of darkness, you see? Yeah. I was watching a video yesterday, you know, just dealing with like, you know, character building. And he said, uh, service, you know, acts of service is just as important as working towards your goal, you know, and achieving your goal. So this is a service that we offer, mm -hmm. you know, a uh, concern, not that I labor that for myself only, but for all of those that seek learning, you know, uh, you, you know how to fish, you know, you, you teach, you teach the next man how to fish. Right. You know, you don't just catch all the fish. That that's the way this uh society is said. You learn how to fish and you just leave everyone else in the dust. Yeah. You know, now you got people, generations that don't know how to fish and you don't dead and gone. Yeah. You know? So it's a very it's a it's a mentality that doesn't pr to produce life. You know, and the, the mentality of Babylon is the mentality that doesn't produce life. That's why it's far spent. That's why it, it's over for Babylon. The Lord yep. has to bring this way of life to an end. And that's how Jake is in the world. They're in the mindset of, oh, well, I can't tell you how I make this much money. I'm just making this much money. You know, but it's a it's a flex. It's a farce. You know, everybody broke as hell, but they're just trying to act like they live in this American dream, this best right. life ever. You know, really, it's just like the way the West is it has to it has to stop. You know, we can go all on, we can go on all day about just the, how out of order and just how this place is completely a mess, and the kingdom of heaven needs to be established. That's right. The West is truly a mess. You know what I'm saying, bro, <laughs> the West is truly a mess. And one of the points that you made, though, everybody's selfish. Mm-hmm. Um, Babylon produces a selfish spirit, bro. Because you go to the um, or you go to South America, man. If there's a man there that knows how to fish, he teaches his whole family how to fish. You see, mm -hmm. in Babylon, people are selfish as hell, bro. The men, the, the whole collective of the nation of Israel, we're not like that, bro. Yeah, the Lord didn't give us that spirit of being selfish, man. We 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 straight up help each other out, man. And that's how it's supposed to be, man. We we correct each other. You know what I'm saying when when a brother go off. Correct that brother, rebuke that brother. You no know saying everything decently in order, of course. Mm -hmm. We rebuke each other, bro. We ain't just and brother, just because we love each other, man. Yeah. Lord said, you know, what I'm saying, look, look, rebuke him. Oh, I would say, um, open rebuke is better than secret love. love. Yeah, 
if you love your brother, you're gonna rebuke your brother if your brother going off. You know what I'm saying? Cause you cause you don't want him to die. Yeah, I got a quick precept. You got it, bro. Sirach 33 and 17, consider that I labor not for myself only, but for all them that seek learning. You know, so we're not laboring the scriptures, you know, just so we can be this super deep guy and know all these breakdowns. But for those, you know, that seek learning, you know, you, 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 you learn, you know, you study, you go out through the week, and then you apply what you learn through your day to day life and you teach it through, you know, through your lessons, you know. Yeah, uh, you know, you know, with the brothers, you know, the one-on-one -on -one talks brothers have with each other, you know, to build each other up. Yeah. Right? All of those that are seeking the knowledge of Yahweh by Shema Shai. The Lord said, "Come to the waters and drink. Come ye, come to the waters, all ye that thirst and drink, man. You see? Mm -hmm. I'm reading on Romans um thirteen. And 12, the night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Yeah, the armor of light, you know, because these uh, principalities, these uh, these uh, forces, these uh, spiritual dark forces that we are up against, they have armor on, they have swords in their hands, and mm -hmm. they're ready for battle. You know, so we got to be able to uh, defend ourselves. We got to be able to... Uh, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through the most high to pulling down our strongholds. So that's our duty as the prophet to pull down the stronghold lies that Esau has set up in the earth, you know, and show unto you the truth. And well, how should I say, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Mm -hmm. So once once you get this word, you know, once you get, receive Yahweh via this word, via the prophets. You know that's that's the beginning of your journey to 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 get back into the good gracious of the heavenly Father via the mediator. That's right. You know, and that's what you need. You need that uh, approval from on high. You don't need approval of men, and that's right. why everyone is so uh, fixated and caught up on the approval of men. You know. Well, that's real worthy, worldly too. No, saying, bro, you always want to uh, get approval from men instead of approval from your how by Shimei was shot. And then no saying, bro, that um the culture of no saying of the world is like if you ain't got what I got, no saying, then you really ain't nobody, right? Yeah. If you're not hanging around this uh this group of people, right? Bro, that's that old that's that old Esau shit, bro. That you see on you know, no saying on like um 2017 or some shows like that. Well, all the all the uh higher upper people, no saying, get to sit at this table right here, and the less fortunate, they over there, no saying, sitting at that table, and everybody over here just think they the goody two shoes is picking on the people over there uh, that they on that level, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Those people over there that thought they was all that really was nobody, you know what I'm saying, bro? That's right, bro. No, that's so true. You know, all of us then went through that, man, growing up. To where no saying you you knew people that have more than you, so they looked down upon you because you didn't have much. No saying when they really want anybody, and look, they they care they had enough character flaws. No saying, bro, mm -hmm. enough character flaws. Look at them now, bro. They out there, they threw right about now. You see, nobody wants to be around because they're arrogant. They got this popish spirit, and they, and they probably threw in the world right about now too. All the people that was proud back in those saying our younger days, uh, middle school, um, uh, middle school, high school, and whoever went to college. Them people probably threw right about now, bro. No yeah, integrity, no harmonious of nothing, man. Just, just nothing. But and the Lord said, pride goes before destruction, and the heart of spirit before fall. You got mm -hmm. it, bro. No, it's just not enough uh, fear of the Lord going on the earth. Right. You know, um, I'm gonna read this uh, this uh, precept in uh, Sirach uh, ten and twenty. Uh, I'm gonna start at twenty two. The points in 24 it says whether he be rich uh noble or poor their glory is in the fear of the lord right mm. and what's the fear of the lord the fear of the lord is the beginning of knowledge right mm -hmm. the, the wisdom knowledge understanding that teaches you how to actually govern your life and how you ought to think and judge different situations that and uh and walk upon the earth that that is our glory you know us uh, applying the wisdom to our life that's how our light shines Right, but it, it takes you being obedient to those instructions to be found in, in, in to be what the fear of the Lord is the first step to be accepted of Him. Yep, right. It says, It is not meat to despise the poor man, damn, understanding, you know, and you know, 
that's what a lot of these uh, camps are, are doing, right? You know, they're, they're despising the, the men of Yahweh by Shema Shai have been given the understanding by calling us bums and, you know, uh, just uh, speaking slander in the, you know, sl slander against us. Neither is it convenient to magnify a simple man. Uh, verse 24 is the point. Great men and judges and pot potentates shall be honored, yet is there none of them greater than he that feareth the Lord? Right? So no one is greater than he that feareth Yahweh by Shema That's you're gonna right. Lord, you're going you're gonna to be walking in a certain way. You're going to be doing, you're going to be taking this grace period uh, for what it's meant to be to learn of Yahweh Shai and realize that Yahweh Shai, what, is meek and lowly in heart. Right? That's what Yahweh Shai said. Learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. Mm -hmm. So we have to be meek and lowly in our minds. That's the true um, high value man on the face of the earth, right about now. Lord Yahweh Shai, of course, was the, was the um, tr uh, true highest value man, because they try to, you know what I'm saying, put that like on a, uh, you got to have money to be a high value man. The Lord said, "The greatest men on the face of the earth are those that fear me." Mm -hmm. Fear. The Lord said, "No sin, look, look, I love those that fear me. I take pleasure in those." That's going right back to um, Psalms one forty-seven and eleven. The Lord said, yeah. um, "I take pleasure in those that fear me, man. Not those no sin that got the money, got the status, no sin got the the best suits and the all this that and that. No." The Lord said, "No sin, yeah." Uh, well, in the, in the um, two verses above that, no sin, it, it went into that. Whether it be noble, whether it be rich, you know what I'm saying? The mm -hmm. greatest you know saying, is, the, is the one that fear the Lord, man. Yeah. So that's what we push over here at Great Millstone, starting off with the elder apostles slash elder bishop, because that's the beginning of knowledge. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, man. You see? But I, I got that preset right quick, bro, if I may. Yeah, you got it, brother. Just Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7, and it reads, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Mm -hmm. That's right. So to fear Yahweh by Shema Shai, that's that's when you begin to know, you know, what pleases Him, right? That's that's the that's the that's the first steps of uh, understanding what you need to do to please Yahweh by Shema Shai when you're willing to be obedient to His word. You know, you gotta be. Uh, if you say if you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But mm -hmm. if you refuse and rebel, you should be devoured by the sword. You know that sword of destruction is is fastly approaching. You know it's fastly coming. Um, can I get preset? Yep. Can I just quote a scripture right quick, bro? Yeah. Going right back to um, Hebrews chapter four, down at the um, in verse one. It says, um, "Those that fear shall enter into that rest." Yep. Yeah. It says, it's, it's um, fear leads you into not into his rest. So the mm -hmm. Israelite, the fear, aka the elect of the nation of Israel, Lord, when we part of that whole for number, is going to enter into that rest. It's, everything starts off with the fear of the Lord. Everything starts off with the fear of the Lord. You got it, bro. Mm -hmm. uh, this is uh, James uh, 2 and 1. It says, my brethren. Um, actually, I'm going to read uh, James 1 and um, 27. Uh First, this is a pure religion and undefiled before the Most High and Father is this to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. You know, so we, we're trying to keep ourselves, you know, blameless in the eyes of the Lord. You mm -hmm. know, and, and you uh, even think you, uh, you know, made an offense, you got to ask the Lord for forgiveness. You know, you got to ask Yahweh by Shema Shai. You know, scripture say if you if you offend your brother, to, you know, to go to him and you know ask for forgiveness and you know talk about it, you know, and you don't want to be offending uh one of the Lord's little ones. Scripture say if you offend a little one, you know, it's better than a, a millstone be uh, uh, tied around your neck, you'd be cast into the sea, mm -hmm. right? Uh, this is okay, can I quote some, bro? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna say, um, offenses must come. But woe unto him of whom of the fences come. So people are gonna get offended, but you better mm -hmm. pray that you're not one of the people that's getting offended though, because it's because the Lord said, Woe unto them, man, eh? who's offended mm -hmm. in his word. And a whole lot of guys are offended at the word, bro. But they say the law, the law, the law. But then when we bring out the law, now, now all things are lawful, but not expedient. Now we're not telling anybody. So we bring out um, Deuteronomy 22 
verse 28 about what happens if, if a man forces himself upon a woman according to the law when it would happen back in the ancient time we're not telling the elder apostle ain't never told no man in great millstone or no man period in the earth to go out and just grab women up no they brought out the law what happened if you did grab a woman that was betrothed or if you grabbed a woman that wasn't betrothed according to the scriptures and everybody got offended at it bro Mm -hmm. The Lord said, "Bless are those that are not offended in my word." They always talking about the law, 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 bro. But then you bring out the law; they're offended in the law, bro. Yeah, scriptures tell you, and um, uh, I'll get it for you. This is um Acts fifteen, and I believe ten. It says, "Now therefore, why tempt ye the Most High to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we are able to bear?" You know, we weren't able to keep the law to 100%. You know, scripture says if you break uh, one aspect of the law, right, then you, uh, uh, if you commit one part of the law, you, you, you break all the law. Yep. You know, if righteousness is not uh, dealing with the law of the Most High in the sense of that's how you uh, get access back. You get access back to Yahweh by Shema Shai through faith in the name right. and faith in the doctrine. That's right. You know, and like what scripture say, uh, we don't make void the law, but we uh, we uh, we establish the law. Yep. So we establish the law of Yahweh by Shema Shai for the things that are expedient for the times that we're in. You know, and the guys that are all about fringes, 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 that's not an expedient thing. You know, in a sense of, you know, being behind enemy lines. Right. Nor, nor is it a very... Uh, financially wise thing for for one that's living paycheck to paycheck right you know and and going on these jobs when your friend is at work you know and then you then you get called into the office you 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 catch more hell oh but you know that's me bearing my cross off yeah you know no no it's it's, it's you being the fool i'm gonna get a precept and it's gonna say um walk with wisdom to those that don't have it walk with mm -hmm. wisdom to those that are without so we got to use this wisdom when we're around just regular people. It don't matter who we're around out there in the earth. We got to walk with wisdom to those that don't have it, man. All things are lawful, but not expedient. It's not wise for us to be walking around with fringes on. Now, if you want to wear your fringes, wear your fringes. But it's not wise for us to be walking around with fringes everywhere we go. All that work with your fringes on. Just hear that. You make yourself a prey. Like Isaiah said, look, we're behind enemy lines, Israel. But, it, but that's what you want. You want the flashiness and all that. It's not a fashion statement. And then, then the Israelites is walking around you know, with the fringes on, bro. Still um, going the hell off, bro. With the fringes on, bro. Yeah, with the fringes on. You got it, bro. This is uh, Matthew 16 and 10. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. You know, so we, we correct our people, you know, so we're, we're not going to, you know, and, and they, they slander us and all these things. We're not going to get uh, all confrontational and physical with them. No, we're going to be harmless as a dove, but we're going to be wise as serpents. You know, fearing Yahweh by Shema Shai, we're going to continue to uh, stick to the script that Yahweh by Shema Shai has, has given us. And if you're offended, you know, by it, then so be it. You know, it's right. going to be you and Yahweh by Shema Shai at the end of the day. And yes, we do have the exclusive names of the Lord. Yep. You know, we're in the midst of wolves. You know, men who would not uh, spare the flock. Men right. Men that come to you in the in in, in sheep's coat and sheep's clothing, but inwardly are, are ravishing wolves. Mm. You know, ready to destroy and and devour. You know, a hireling care if not for the sheep. Yep. You know. He doesn't care for the sheep. He's a hireling. That's right, bro. Hey, look, bro, ready to ready to ruin your career at the drop of a dime, bro. Ready to ruin, ready to no saying put you, your wife, no saying your offspring, everybody, no saying on the on the side of the street, just bummed out, bro. Just wouldn't just um just run your name through the mud, just slander you, lie on you, stuff on the song, bro. Just oh well, bro, I'm gonna make an example of them. They wanna they wanna um ruin they wanna ruin our, our lives. You know what I'm saying? We're, we're gonna mm -hmm. ruin them. We're gonna ruin them. Yeah, it ain't no honor among man. thieves anyway, bro. Me and um, the brother Kabbalah was talking about that. Ain't no honor among thieves, no saying. So once it really go down, and, and, and somebody, no saying, really somebody that's in the head of these groups, no saying, start no saying, ratting out the leader. The leader gonna, the leader gonna come out with everything, bro. Everybody's gonna come out, or, or either the leader's gonna try to come out, no saying, and, um, try to blame something on on a couple of other men in the top congregation, and they're gonna bring it all out because ain't no honor among thieves, bro. That's right. 
Um, I got something. Got it, bro. This is a uh, St. Matthew's uh, 23 and uh, uh, start. I'll go. I'll start at 26. It says, "Thou blind Pharisees, clean first that which is within the cup and platter, that the outside of them may be clean also." You know, so it's about you know cleaning the in the inward man first and foremost, not just about the outward apparel. You know, mm -hmm. and that's what Jake is all about. With their uh, everyone got the same shirt on. You know, we gotta show our unity in our shirts and what type of garments we have on. You know, it says, verse twenty-seven: Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! With a hypocrite is an actor. Mm -hmm. You know, someone who's playing the part of the men of Yahweh by Shema Shai, but inwardly, you are not all there. Right. You know, in, inwardly, you got deceit. You know, you got all Terry of Moses, the what Yahweh by Shema Shai tells us to push. As you can see with their doctrine, you know, uh, the rich man and Lazarus is no longer talking about, you know, Esau, Edom, you know, Jacob, is, you know, is talking about, you know, which I'm not going to tell you what, you know, what they're saying is talking about. Right. But, you know, it's. It, the rich man Lazarus, you know, the rich man is Esau, Edom, right? And the the, the dogs that uh, looked on uh, the, the poor man uh, source, right, is, is these other nations. Right. Right, taking advantage of our uh, Lazarus low estate, right, which is us as a nation. Right. So just, it says. They're all know, leaking, bro. Yeah, bro. The all that they did have, bro. When, when, once you get rid of the name, bro, that's it. Yeah, that's, that's it, bro. Once you get rid of the name, once you get rid of the proper name in the Hebrew tongue, we, 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 we've been seeing it for years now, bro. A little couple of years we've been around. When you do away with the proper name of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son in the Hebrew tongue, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, down. Mm -hmm. Damn. Damn, all leaks everywhere, bro. And then the Lord just bug you out, man. Yeah, bro. That name, that name keeps the demons off you, man. You see? Yeah. Keeps you um, considering, like, Yahweh by Shema Shah is gonna judge me. At least I uh, maintain my integrity. Right. That, that's the that's the main thing. A lot of men, you know, are you know they're not maintaining their integrity. You know, they're trimming their ways to seek love from the community. 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 This is uh. <laughs> <laughs> this is Saint Matthew's twenty three and twenty seven. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye are like. For ye are like unto white sepulchers, which yep. indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead man's bones Damn. and of all uncleanness. You know, so, you know, them garments, you know, they look clean and spiffy and, you know, we ain't going to say that, you know, some brothers don't, you know, some, every, everything is not for everyone, you know. So they got, you know, nice fancy garments, you know, nice and purple. Uh, the t-shirts, they out of there. You know, the garments look pretty cool though. <laughs> with with the with the cape on the back. <laughs> so, you know, Jake do his thing, but it don't matter. Right. The Lord's not looking on the outward appearance. You know, when the Lord sent Samuel to anoint uh, King David to be king, he told him not to look on uh, his brother for his, the height of his stature. Because what well, you had King Saul, he was the tallest man in Israel at that time. Mm -hmm. So he saw the height and stature and continence of uh, King David's brother. He thought, he said, surely the Lord's anointed his before me. Mm -hmm. He said, no, I have refused him because the most high looketh at the inward man, the heart, yep. you know. Lord know that spirit, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Lord, and plus the scriptures say, um, um, the, the spirit quicken if the flesh profit if not. You know what I'm saying? The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So that flesh don't mean nothing. The outer appearance don't mean nothing, man. Yeah. You can look like you know, the bars, you know, so you got on the baddest garment. You know what I'm saying? That don't mean that you still be weak as hell. Mm -hmm. What's that scripture? You got it. Um, I got one more verse here, but what's that scripture? Is it Jeremiah? Like the, the heart is deceitful above all things? Yeah, you want me to get it? Yeah, well, for sure. I'm going to finish this out just so we can go, go to that yeah. point. It yep. says, Even so ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Right? Hey. You, you can't hide your works. Uh, 
You can't hide the works of men from Yahweh by Shema Shah. The works of men can't be hid from the Lord. Mm -hmm. You know? Thing about a uh, Kazat box favorite one, the second editor of 16. We'll get that one after Jeremiah. Yep. After yep. Jeremiah. What was it? Uh, what 17 and 9. Can I, can I read 9 and 10, Bob Shah? Yep, yep. Jeremiah chapter 17, starting off at verse 9, and it reads, The heart is deceitful above all things. Yes. It's you know, the heart, talking about your mind, it's deceitful. It's full of deceit, right? Your mind is full of deceit because mm -hmm. we're in a, we're in the midst of a, a wicked world that's constantly bombarded you or, you know, it's, it's okay to steal that piece of candy from the candy store. Who's watching? Right. It's, it's okay to to, to, to uh, hit that woman up that got a man. Who, who's watching? See? You know, so the heart is uh, full of deceit. Right. You know? And you got it, brother. Nah, I'm I, I just saying that's right. Okay, God. <laughs> Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9, it reads the heart, meaning that mind is deceitful above all things. That mind can play tricks on you. Mm -hmm. And and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Yeah, it, it's desperately wicked, you know, that the mind is desperate <laughs> to commit that wickedness. You know, but but who can who can really know? Because that's that's the fight, that's the battle. You mm -hmm. know, after Yahweh Shai is uh, enter into you with these words of life, we have to fight off those those desires at the flesh, uh, the 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 lust of the flesh that that it wants to push upon it, that that's wants to right. be uh, weighed upon the mind. Right. So we have to fight. You know, this is a battle. It says, uh, "Who can know it?" Uh, reverse them off, Kasha. Um, and it reads, um. I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins. Mm -hmm. Even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. That's right. It's a I, the Lord, try the heart. You know, so the Lord puts us through these trials and tribulations to try our hearts. And what it means he searches the reins, you know, after we go through those trials and tribulations, you know, brothers meditate like, damn, yeah, I could have done this better. You know, or I messed up on this. You know, I slipped on that. You know, that's the Lord trying our intentions. The reins are our intentions. You know, even to give every man according to his work shall be. So the, the fruit of our doing, you know, the Lord don't allow our slip ups to, to flourish in the earth. You know, uh, in the sense of uh, if you, uh, if you repent for them. Right. And you're of a, of a, of a contrite and a, of, a, of a more spirit, mm -hmm. you know? So uh, that that's that's what the Lord wants, someone who is uh, brokenhearted, you know? Someone who actually feels bad for their mistakes that they're doing. Someone that's actually yep. showing remorse. Right. But you got a whole lot of guys that are saying, bro, they're just coming with it, coming with it, coming with it, bro. They don't feel sorry for slandering somebody, bro. Mm -mm. They don't feel sorry for getting a person fired, bro. No, they don't. They'll feel sorry for messing with another man's woman, bro. I mean, they don't feel the, sorry for, um, and I'm just gonna say, bro, they don't feel sorry, you know what I'm saying, for calling the Heavenly Father and his only begotten son, Yo Play Yoga, bro. Literally. They don't feel fucking sorry, bro. You suppose that you supposed that bed for forgiveness, you supposed that went somewhere and cried for saying that shit right there, man. Because mm -hmm. it says, um, don't put the, um, the name of our power in vain. I'll tell you that in Exodus. Cause he would not hold you guiltless, man. That's that's the thing just you you're supposed to feel bad for, man. You're supposed to go in the corner by yourself and, and cry in bed for forgiveness, yo. Mm -hmm. Pray to the Lord, man. Ask for forgiveness for real, for real. To never say that again, man. We just keep saying it, keep saying it, keep saying it. Cause the heart is deceitful above all things. You them demons starting to consume you now. Yeah. Look, that hedge of protection ain't around you no more. Cause going right back to um Psalms 34, bro. I'm thinking. The fear of the Lord, um, the angels that can't round about those, the fear of the Lord. Mm-hmm. They're saying that hedge of protection is around you because you go into the word kept, they'll say it's pretty much to besiege. Meaning you got more than one angel around you, you got angels besieged. Just like when you go into um when they besiege Jerusalem, they'll say Romans, they'll say uh circle, they'll say besiege is, is like a, a band of men, they'll say that's around you. But when you ain't got the angels around you, when there's no fear of the Lord, no saying, then you got them demons entering in now. Yeah, because when you the got enemy, um, because I was gonna say, when the enemy comes in, that's his goal to come to come to come past you, like to surround you, so you don't have a way to escape to trample. Right. You. 
You know, so that's why the angels are there on every side that the, that the enemy can possibly come in to defend you. You know, mm -hmm. to defend those uh, evil thoughts. You know, to 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 call your uh, when you're in the midst of uh, being tempted to call your spirit back. Yeah. You know, and say this is the way. Walk, walk, go down this path. Right. You know, the Lord's always uh, there. Just ears gotta be open. That's right. But, but look, um, bro, that, that's if you believe in Yahweh, Baha, Shem, Yahweh, Shai. But if you believe in God and Christ, that's bro. Ain't no protection right there. No. Ain't no protection. And they say you can call the Lord anything. You, you, uh, you can pray to your play yoga, bro, and all this BS. Mm -hmm. You can pray to Yah. You know what I'm you just, they ain't got no protection, bro, because they're not they're not protected by Yahweh, Baha, Shem, Yahweh, Shai, bro. They say, um, Lord, Yahweh, Shai, they, they make fun of the name again, bro. They keep doing it every day, every day, every day, bro. It's not knowing they're going to have to, they have to give account thereof. Look, every idle word, you got to give account thereof in the day of judgment, yo. Mm-hmm. That's right, father, bro. By thy words, thou should be justified, and by thy words, thou should be condemned, bro. They condemn themselves by the words that they speak, bro. Mm-hmm. Because they got money, bro. That's right. They got status, and bro, and then the thing about it, a rich man, no saying this is a liar. He don't want to no say humble himself and come back down because he's gonna lose his followers and he, he's gonna um feel shit, man. You 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 want shame to come upon you right about now. You want humble this to come up because you don't want the Lord to shame you. Mm -hmm. They build up this reputation, no saying of being right, right, right. When they know they're wrong, no saying that they congregation looking at them as the beacon of light when they've been lying to the congregation the whole time. And then I want to humble themselves down, no saying, and, and admit that they was wrong, no saying about pretty much everything that they saying, no saying. You see, somebody block that dude, um, brother B, yo. Somebody block that dude, brother B, man. Get him the hell out of here, man. He ain't, he ain't our brother, bro, a damn brother B. You ain't our brother, man. We don't know who you is. Did Johnny come lately? All these bots and trolls and scoffers and all that. The Lord going to do it. And, and we've been reading, you know what I'm saying? Examine yourself, you know what I'm saying? Humble down and things of that nature. Fear the Lord, but it ain't no fear, but it's going to be, bro. Mm -hmm. there ain't no fear of the Lord on the earth, but it's getting ready to be when the Lord brings those sword judgments, yo. You see? Cause, yeah, cause it's never a shortage of spirits creative and bending. The Lord got enough to go around. You got it, bro. Uh, this is uh, 2 Ezra 16 and 63. Surely he knoweth your inventions and what ye think in your heart. Even them that sin and would hide their sin. Damn. It says, and when your sins are brought forth, ye shall be ashamed before men mm. in, your, in your own I'm sorry, uh, I skipped the verse. 64, therefore the Lord exactly searched out all your works, and ye shall all, and he shall put you all to shame. Mm. You know, and the shame is that judgment that Yahweh Shema Shah is going to have to, you know, come upon you for you not considering during this time of grace. It says, and when, ye, and when your sins are brought forth, ye shall be ashamed before men, and your own sin shall be your accusers in that day. Damn. Mm -hmm. mm. So your own sins are going to be, your, your actions are being recorded. You know, they're going to be your accusers in that day. Well, what about this? You know, what about these actions? What about Damn. how you handle this situation? Mm, 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 mm. You know, that's why the scripture say we are uh, chastised now, you know, so that we are not chastised with the world. You know, we're getting our... You know our uh, our lashes of disobedience now. You know, uh, in the, in the sense of the Lord is uh, 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 chastising us into the right direction. Yep. You know why Jake is just going on, going on. We're receiving the Lord's discipline. Yep. Why the Jake is just going on until you know that ju judgment day come and all hell's gonna break loose and you have to drink the cup of the Lord. You know, in His fury. Damn. Cause bro, the screw say uh, we'll bring out a couple more, bro, and they will end it. No, say, cause I know you got to get ready to handle some business, and I got to get ready to handle a little something, something, not nothing really, but you more so. But I just want to quote um Proverbs the fifteenth chapter verse ten. It says, "Correction is grievous unto those that forsake of the way, and he that hated reproof shall die, bro." The Israelites that don't want to be corrected will eventually get put to the dirt, bro. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the Lord says it's going to be sevenfold more upon sinners, bro. It ain't going to just be like one thing is going to happen to them, bro. A complete number of things is going to happen to these jakes that don't repent, man. Repent, Israel. No, Stop being right. proud, man. 
We ain't got it. We need help. All of us need help. You see? All of us make mistakes, you know. We need to repent, man. Because the rep, when the rep, the Lord said, you know, saying the um the worst time ever known in mankind is coming down the pipeline. You see, it's gonna be worse than the flood, it's gonna be worse than 70 AD, it's gonna be worse than post-slavery, it's gonna be worse than Jacob's trouble, man. See, um, all the prophets seen it, man. Um, what was that? What was that Ezra you know said they grabbed the stomach and all that, bro. He started throwing up. Mm -hmm. That might be Jeremiah. Or might have been Jeremiah. Or I know what saying. No, saying he's seen he's seen them judging man. He started throwing up. He got sick. The prophets got sick, man. When he seen these end time prophecies kicking in those well, as it was did say, no saying the beginning of famine, the beginning of mourning, the beginning of evils. What shall I do? He said, Woe is me, woe is me, woe is me. Who would deliver me in those days? Meaning destruction, 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 evils. Who gonna deliver me from all these evils? And he was talking about these times, man. You see. Jeremiah said, "Oh yeah, Jer yeah, that's Jeremiah. You're right, bro. Jeremiah said he seen every man with his hands on his loins, man. That's travail upon a woman with child, man. He said they face they face turning to pelvis and everything. You see, mm -hmm. guys playing around with the words of the Lord. C continue to do what you do, though. No saying because the Lord got everybody in there a lot right about now. That's why we constantly praying um, Psalms 51 to with a whole chapter, but Psalms 51, 10 and 11. We're constantly praying that each and every day, begging the Lord to have mercy on us, bro." Crying, mm -hmm. crying, sign and crying, begging the Lord to forgive us for all our wrongful thoughts, sayings, and doings in this life and our former life, man. You see, we're scared, man. We're scared of, we're terrified of the kings of terror, man. We're scared and terrified of Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, man. You see, it says, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade, man. We ain't playing around with the Lord, and we're constantly praying that the Lord keeps that spirit on us, you know what I'm saying, to stay fearful, you see, and to stay in a repentant mind state. You got it, bro. Come. That's all I have, bro. Unless you had something you can bring out. Yeah, just, I just got one more. Come. Just an open form, you know what I'm saying? Remember, we brought out Jeremiah 28. All these things are gonna come to pass, but the Lord, you know what I'm saying, took us on another um another way, you know, because the spirit is like the wind anyway. Pretty mm -hmm. much a lesson on not being proud, and that goes for each of see the men that's actually doing these lessons, the lessons for us, um uh, more so, and the listeners. So as we do these lessons, we most definitely got to take heed to what we bring it out according to the scriptures. Every lesson that we do, the Lord's like, yo, you doing a lesson. I want you to more so take heed to it, but it's for the listeners too, you see? So when we do these lessons, man, we're taking heed to what we're learning too. And we're learning at the same time and we're growing and we're being more fearful when these scriptures come out too. Because it's all going to happen, man. The Lord's going to search every man's heart, man, his mind. And everything is being recorded, man, you see? Proverbs mm -hmm. chapter 13, verse 18, it reads, poverty and shame. Shall be to him or her, the Israelites, that refuses instruction. You can't be reproved. You can't be corrected. You see, you don't want to repent. You don't want to turn back. You don't want to stop from your nonsense. Poverty and shame. You're up on the mountaintop right about now, but poverty and shame is going to come. And the Lord said, I'm going to do it in front of the whole congregation. Everyone's going to see it, man. The Lord's going to embarrass you. Did she repent? Proverbs 13, 18. Poverty and shame shall be to him or her that refuses instruction. But he or she, because when you hear he, women say, oh, yeah, this is saying he. It don't mean she. It applies to the man and the woman. But he that regardeth reproof, you can be corrected. He'll be honored, man. That's right. You got it, bro. That's right. And, we, and we're looking to be uh, honored by Yahweh by Shema Shai in the day when he uh, comes back and, vi and visits the world. Right? And during the time of Jacob's trouble, that's how the Lord's going to visit this place via his judgments that he's going to execute. Right, so we're looking to be honored in the heavens. That's that's where the honor counts. You know, that's where we want to be honored. You know, uh, more than anything. You know, we don't really care about uh, scripture say, uh, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and, and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives even unto the death. Right. right. So uh, we're looking to overcome this world via the testimony of Yahweh Shai, the spirit of prophecy. You know, uh, and, and and not having you know our our lives and our mind fully invested in this current uh, present time. That was it. Kind of with that, you know, uh, Lord's willing. You know, you're edified through the spirit and power of Yah by Shema Shai. You know, we're gonna close out, give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Hashem, Yahweh Shai, Hashem, Rakadash. The one who say apostles, the great most one teaching us, one saying truth, we're going to buy them well, and peace and blessings so flood to the nation of Israel. Next time we say, Shalom. Shalom.